Have you ever found something that you wanted to buy but couldn't possibly justify spending the money on it? So you left the browser tab open for days or weeks, letting it nag at you until you finally just gave in and buy the damn thing so you can finally close out the tab, and then as soon as you do, you immediately think to yourself, why the hell did I just spend $79.99 plus shipping on a limited edition Garbage Pail Kids NES cartridge when I don't even have an NES to play the thing on? Well anyway, this video is about how I bought a limited edition Garbage Pail Kids NES cartridge, even though I don't own an NES. Why you ask? Well, because the makers of this game made an ad campaign that ran right up and kicked me full strength in the nostalgia, that's why. The 80s was a uh, super weird and exciting decade. There were three big things going on, Madonna, the Nintendo Entertainment System, and Garbage Pail Kids. The backstory is that in the 80s, the two biggest things in pop culture, the Nintendo Entertainment System and Garbage Pail Kids, were collaborating on a game that was so putrid and so vile that the project got banned before it ever even saw the light of day. Disgusting video game. Shame on people that produced that track. The naysayers, they killed it. No way this was going to get approved by Nintendo. The game never showed up. But, so the story goes, the files got rescued and released almost 40 years later. See? Doesn't that make you want to buy it even though you don't have an NES either? Well, to be honest, that wasn't enough for me either. But, you know what was? Making it in stale bubblegum pink and Mad Mike baby blue plastic. Well, here's the real story. Back in the 1980s, President Ronnie, besides getting kidnapped by ninjas, also eased regulations about advertising to kids. And soon enough, ads for sugary cereal and bubblegum were not only aimed at kids, but explicitly anti-adult. For you, not them. Media aimed at young people had a rebellious streak to it, which for kids, that usually just meant making things really gross. And video games were no exception, from ads to games themselves. So it seems like Garbage Pail Kids would be a perfect fit for the NES. Now I don't know where the actual idea for this game came from, but it looks like it was made by IM8Bit, who makes all sorts of video game collectibles and memorabilia, and Retrotainment, who actually created the game. And it's actually licensed by Tops, which is pretty cool. Speaking of Tops, Back in elementary school, I suddenly got really into baseball cards for some reason. Our family wasn't rich enough for upper deck cards, but we weren't so poor that we bought FLIR cards either, so I was a Topps guy for sure. But in 1991, Topps started putting out Desert Storm cards. Yeah, actual cards about the war in Kuwait. I still have tons of these sitting in a box in an attic somewhere. I wonder if they're worth anything. Dick Cheney, what the hell? Anyway, back to this game. Let's open it up and look inside. It comes with these cool pixel art trading cards. That's pretty cool. And this booklet, which looks just like the old Nintendo instruction manuals. It also has all kinds of lore and history in here about Garbage Pail Kids and their cultural impact. By the way, did you guys know that Garbage Pail Kids were created by Art Spiegelman? Like, the guy who made Mouse? Anyway, the cartridge itself is definitely not the baby blue that I was promised. It came in this sort of translucent blue, and I'm actually pretty disappointed in this, to be honest. I mean, it definitely has that same NES form factor, and I'm a big fan of clear plastic for sure, but... I mean, look how this thing was supposed to look. That's honestly half the reason that I actually bought this. Oh well. I guess the only thing left is to put it in a machine and see if it works. Since I don't have an NES of my own, I've gone to my favorite retro game bar, Critical Hit in Nagoya, to try it out. Hey, it works! I didn't even have to blow on it! So, this game lets you play as four different playable characters. Luke Puke, who projectile vomits, Leaky Lindsay, who shoots snot rockets, Patty Putty, who is essentially a big rubber ball, 
and the titular Mad Mike, who's sort of the bruiser of the group. It actually sort of plays like the original Ninja Turtles, in that each character has specific advantages for various stages. Patty jumps up the highest, which you need at times, but also there's not really much of an attack to speak of. Leaky Lindsay has the distance projectiles, but they only shoot in a straight line. Luke Puke's vomit can hit enemies down below, and also remain as a trap for oncoming enemies. The stages are multi-leveled platformers, sort of reminiscent of Goonies 2, except instead of Italian mafiosos, you have farting butts. I'll be honest, at first I thought that this was just a cheap nostalgia money grab, but it's actually surprisingly fun to play. If this actually had come out in the 1980s, it would have been the talk of my elementary school for sure. And it probably would have been banned almost immediately. I mean, look how gross this shit is. I don't think it's worth $79.99 to have a physical copy, especially when it's available on Steam for about a tenth of that price. But sometimes consumerism just gets the best of you, and you end up buying a Chucky costume for your dog. It's a wild world out there, so you better hold on tight to your wallet.